I firmly believe that God is going to do something powerful tonight. I firmly believe that there is going to be a lot of deliverance tonight. I firmly believe that God is going to do something supernatural tonight and many of your lives in the name of Jesus Christ. So come expectant. Make sure you share, you tag, you invite, uh, because it's about to be a powerful time in the Lord. And this is not something that you want to miss out on. This is something you want to make sure that you are attentive, that you are really paying attention, because it's going to be good. You know, like I promised y'all, um, I'm going to try to be doing these live streams a little more. Um, so you gain understanding of the things of the spirit. So you gain understanding about the things of the spirit. Okay. Now, um, so we have Sharnita from Georgia, uh, Catherine from Catherine. We have a lot of people from here. Jonathan, Sharon is a YouTube subscriber god bless you vanessa is in here um prophetess quinesha god bless you rosemary someone said i used to be a loyal customer of starbucks but started getting dreams of the ocean trying in so listen before we begin i want you guys to share this with somebody share it on your facebooks because it's going to be powerful you hear me it's going to be absolutely powerful. It's going to be revelatory and it's going to gain under you're going to gain understanding from a biblical standpoint when it comes to marine spirits, when it comes to I'm going to talk a little bit about the marine kingdom and this this involves all of you. I don't care if you know nothing about it. I don't care if you don't understand. You will learn tonight. Okay. Um so let me know if you can hear me clearly. Can y'all hear me? Is the sound good? Is the sound good right now? Is the sound good? If you're ready to receive this word, I want you to type in the comments and say, praise God. I want you to type in the comments and say, praise God. If you're believing God for deliverance, if you're believing, if you're ready for tonight, if you believe it's going to be great, if you believe that the Lord is going to move tonight. Perfect. Amen. Someone said Starbucks equals marine spirits. <laughs> okay. Okay, perfect. So I really, is the music too loud in the background? Let me know. Is the music too loud? Let me know. Is it, is the music too loud in the background? Or is it perfect? Does it sound good? Is it? I don't want it to be a bother while I'm teaching, uh, but I do want the atmosphere to really be shifted while I am um, teaching uh, tonight in the name of Jesus. Um, it's good. Perfect. That's great. Amazing. So, guys, uh, let me open this up in prayer. Father, Lord, I just thank you, Lord, that... We are here, God, with your beautiful people, amazing women uh, of God, men of God. We're all here, Lord. We're in different countries, different cities, different regions, God, all dealing with different things. We're black, white, brown, yellow, just we're all different colors, different places and whatnot, but we're all, Lord, in the body of Christ, Lord. And we are here tonight, Lord, to learn. We're here, Lord, tonight to seek your face. We're here, Lord, tonight, Father God, to get deeper understanding. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray, amen. Okay, so um, I really wanted to help you guys gain understanding 
when it comes to things pertaining to the marine kingdom and the demonic okay before i really open open this up with what i'm talking about with the nile river first of all witchcraft ouija board you know seances you know little stuff like that tarot cards it's it's very minor okay that's what the bible talks about in the ephesians chapter 6 verse 12 we don't wrestle against flesh and blood but against principalities rulers of darkness spiritual hosts of wickedness so there's a hierarchy of the demonic okay a lot of people think tarot cards or the crystals are the worst things or it's just so terrible it's demonic yes but it's not what's keeping people bound generationally it's not what's really the covenant keeper within bloodlines okay um and i want you guys to have an understanding that the marine kingdom is real marine spirits are real okay now the two powers that a lot of people the two powers that are running through bloodlines right now it comes from the water the marine kingdom and also necromancy which means that they do things uh pertaining to ancestral spirits or the dead or they do things at graves and whatnot or they do rituals at at grave sites or the grave and whatnot so necromancy is a huge thing god called it an abomination and then now there is also worshiping river gods river spirits and those things are real and powerful and i have to really put make that foundation right now because many of you believe that these things are just fairy tales they're not fairy tales there's a reason why hollywood has portrayed um the little mermaid and the world under uh the sea it's spiritual just like there's a world in the heavens the bible calls satan the prince of the power of the air okay so there are spiritual worlds there are places that the devil has conquered because Adam and Eve have given him access to the dominion of the earth. So Adam and Eve had dominion in the water, the air, all the animals, but through Adam and Eve's sin, they have transferred over some of that dominion. And now the devil has begun to occupy certain places where we now call the marine kingdom or the prince of the power of the air. You understand me? So, um, so tonight, I'm going to be talking about unmasking the Nile River. Unmasking the Nile River. Egyptian river gods and sacrificing unto marine spirits. Okay. I'm going to give you guys an understanding of the Nile River in the time of Moses. Okay. I'm going to give you guys an understanding. And what I'm saying matters. It, it didn't just stop in Egypt. It's not just a egyptian thing but i'm giving you revelation of what was really happening in egypt okay unmasking the nile river egyptian river gods and sacrificing unto marine spirits so some of you are wondering what's a marine spirit where's a biblical marine spirit marine spirit just means a water spirit an evil spirit that identifies with the water an evil spirit that takes residence in the water spiritually just like Satan takes residence in the air spiritually. Okay. So in the time of Moses, Pharaoh and all of them, there was a river. Okay. There was a river. Yeah. Go ahead. Prophet is right. Go ahead. Thumbs up the video before we begin. Yeah. Like it. Thumbs it up and whatnot. So this can be pushed out because there's going to be a lot of deliverance at the end. Um, so make sure that you thumbs up. Uh, you thumbs up and everything. It's going to be good. Okay. So in the time of Moses, in the time of Pharaoh, what, what we must understand is that in that time, there was a lot of sorcery, witchcraft, necromancy, things with the marine kingdom. Okay. Pharaoh wasn't just someone who was a king. He was a sorcerer. He was a magician. He had magicians and sorcerers in his kingdom. Okay, and they worshiped other gods that had nothing to do with the God of the Bible. They worshiped other gods that had nothing 
to do with the God of the Bible. Nothing, but they had power. Okay, but they had power. You see, there was a river in Egypt called the Nile River. Somebody now listen to me. There was a river in Egypt called the Nile River. The Nile River was owned by Pharaoh. He believed it to be his. And the Egyptians idolized the Nile River and believed it was a blessing from the gods. Okay, so people in necromancy, people that perform necromancy, people who are into witchcraft, people that um, are into uh, even other religions, they focus on the sun, they focus on the water, they focus in the air, they worship gods of the sun, the stars, and, and all these things. They focus on those elemental, celestial, those elemental and celestial things. They focus on those things. So in Egypt, their focus was on the Nile River, and they believed it was a blessing from the gods, okay? They believed that it was a blessing from the gods, all right? You see, the god of the Nile River was known as a god named Happy, H-A-P-I. You can look this up. The god of the Nile was known as Happy, H-A-P-I. And he, and he was a powerful Egyptian god who personified the blessings of the annual floods of the Nile River. So when the water would come and, and fill in the Nile River, they would believe that it was sent from the gods to bless the crops, to bless the agricultural state in, in that time. You understand me? So happy is a marine spirit. I'm gonna give you guys some, some understanding here. So when I'm talking about the happy, this, this thing right here, this was the entity that they were worshiping this was the entity that they were worshiping in Egypt. And they believed that this entity was the God over the Nile River. And they believed that the blessings that came from the Nile River came from this entity called Happy. Happy is a marine spirit. You understand me? A marine. Even before Starbucks, even before Little Mermaid, they were worshiping spirits in the water they were called river gods they were worshiping it now there is a reason a lot of you are having dreams of yourself being in the water or you're having dreams of yourself being married under the water or you're always having sexual dreams there is a reason for it it is real they worship not only statues but these things were demons these things were demons it is a real thing you understand me? So I want to give you guys an understanding. So all of you have all of y'all seen this type of statue. You've seen the statue, whether it be by painting, you've seen it in movies, maybe museums, you've seen it before, but you have seen these statues and you never understood what they represented. Okay. You have seen these statues, but you never understood what it represented and what the Egyptians were really worshiping. What were they, you, you never really understood what they were worshiping. You understand me? You, you didn't understand what they were truly worshiping. Happy, that entity I showed you is a marine spirit. It is a river God that governed the Nile River in Egypt, okay? The Egyptian villagers made offerings and sacrifices to this entity. So they will go to the water because they believed that that creature, that spirit uh, dwelled within the water. So they created statues as a personification or just a, a, a physical statue to be like, okay, this is happy. We can come bow down before it. But when it came to the sacrifices, they made offerings and sacrifices in the water. The Egyptians, the Egyptian villagers made offerings and sacrifices to happy during the flood season. 
and they would throw amulets into the Nile River. So whenever they were trying to make sacrifices or offerings or blessings unto the Nile River, unto the false god in the water, they would throw things in the water. They would throw things in the water because they believed that Happy, the Egyptian God, the river God, dwelled within the water. You understand me? The villagers would also parade statues of Happy through the towns for prayer and worship of the God of the Nile. So when you would see all these statues in movies, all these statues in paintings or museums, a lot of them rep represent river gods. They represent marine spirits. If you understood what God that represented. So when you hear me say marine kingdom, the occult knows what it is. Pharaoh knew what the marine kingdom was. Pharaoh knew what a water spirit was. They understood these things. They understood that water spirits were powerful. They had them in Egypt. They were worshiped them in Egypt. Happy was a false God responsible for the waters in Egypt. It was responsible for the Nile, the Nile River in Egypt. Listen, it's about to go, it's about to get deeper here. I'm going somewhere with this, okay? And deliverance is gonna break out in the end. I'm going somewhere with this. Okay? Happy was a false god responsible for the waters in Egypt. He was a river god, he was a marine spirit. Now let's go to the book of Ezekiel, chapter 29, verse 3. Okay, Ezekiel chapter 29, verse 3. Speak and say, thus says the Lord God, Behold, I am against you, O Pharaoh, king of Egypt, O great monster who lies in the midst of his rivers who has said, my river is my own, I have made it for myself. Thus says the Lord God, behold, I am against you, O Pharaoh, king of Egypt, O great monster who lies in the midst of his rivers. Now, this is not the only time where God is talking about a creature in the water. The Bible would also talk about Leviathan as a twisting serpent in the book of Leviticus or the book of Genesis, one of the two, as a twisting serpent that is within the sea. You see, there were marine spirits governing the waters of Egypt and the Egyptians acknowledged them as gods and would build statues of them. The Egyptian river god Happy has been seen by all of us through paintings, movies, and pictures, but we did not understand what we were truly looking at. You see, these Egyptian gods were marine spirits that governed the land, governed the water, governed the success. Pharaoh, all those magicians, they believed that their, the, the, the success of their crops the success, the success of their stones or their riches came from these gods and they were marine spirits. These Egyptian gods were marine spirits that governed the land. You see, Pharaoh did not only operate with sorcery. Listen, Pharaoh and his magicians did not only operate with sorcery or magic, but also with marine powers. Marine powers is one of the highest level of demonic forces. Ne I believe necromancy is the number one when they work with the dead. But marine powers is one of the greatest powers in the demonic. You see, when Moses turned the Nile into blood, the magicians had the ability to perform the same wonder through the water. Okay, I'm going to show you this in Exodus chapter 7, verse 20 through 22. Exodus 20, Exodus chapter 7, verse 20 through 22. Moses and Aaron did just as the Lord had commanded. He raised his staff in the presence of Pharaoh and his officials and struck the water of the Nile. 
and all of the water was changed into blood. The fish in the Nile died, and the river smelled so bad that the Egyptians could not drink its water. Blood was everywhere in Egypt, but the Egyptians, but the Egyptian magicians did the same things by their secret arts. And Pharaoh's heart became hard. He would not listen to Moses and Aaron, just had the Lord said. So the reason that Pharaoh was not listening to Moses when Moses would pro proclaim signs and wonders was because the magicians had the capacity to do the same wonders in the water, to do the same wonders with turning things into snakes, to do this because the, mag the magicians and sorcerers, they were warlocks that communicated with the underworld. There were warlocks that communicated with the marine. I'm telling you, it's real. You don't want to believe it. It's real. How did they have the capacity to also turn water into blood? How did they have the capacity to turn a staff into a snake? Oh, my God. And some of you are having dreams of snakes. You're having dreams of you being under the water. Do you understand me? Oh, but sometimes we read that. We read the, we read the scriptures. And we think it's just, oh, they had magic or they could perform. No, the truth of it is they were inquiring of the gods that they worshipped. The gods that they worshipped, the river gods are the, are the spirits that begin to empower them to perform those signs in the waters. Because that happy spirit, the river god, it, he governed the waters. He had dominion over the, the Nile. So when they came to perform the same thing, it was the river God is the one that did it. To basically say, I can do the same thing. I'm a God. I can do it wasn't by the works of the magicians and sorcerers. But it was the works of the marine powers within the water. I'm telling you. Because witchcraft, magicians, they don't just have power. It's sourced from a spirit. Why do you think certain people, they go pray specifically to the sun or they go to the water or they pray to the moon? There are different personifications of spirits. There are different characteristics of spirits. They want to identify in certain areas. They take residence in certain areas on purpose. And they require specific rituals, sacrifices, and offerings. Some of you are learning tonight that the marine kingdom is real. Because if it wasn't real, how did the magicians and the sorcerers have the capacity to also turn water into, uh, water into blood? How did they have the capacity to turn a staff into a snake? This right here, a staff into a snake. What power were they operating with? This is why a lot of us, we say, you know, don't worry about the devil. Are you joking me? The Bible says in Ephesians chapter four, verse 27, and give no opportunity to the devil. Because Apostle Paul knew the power of Satan. It was not greater than the power of God. But if you open up the power to the devil, because there are levels to the demonic. There's levels to principalities. There are levels to spiritual hosts of wickedness. You understand me? So they performed the same things. You see, these river gods required offerings and sacrifices and shrines were built and offerings were cast annually into the river's rising waters. Now, some of those sacrifices were humans because Moses, listen to Cassius Revelation, Moses, was supposed to be a sacrifice in the Nile River, but instead he was hidden in a basket and sent safely down the Nile. Okay? Because they were killing the Hebrew boys. They will sacrifice the Hebrew boys in the water, in the Nile River, unto the false god Happy. Now there came a time where Pharaoh's like, I want you to kill all the Hebrew boys, but let the Hebrew daughters live. So it was a time to kill Moses and all the Hebrew boys. 
but Moses was hidden and protected for three months. And Moses was sent down into the Nile and, and, and then the Egyptians picked him up. They were going to sacrifice. They sacrificed all the boys of the Hebrew so that Hebrew, so the Israelites would not be strong. Now, I'm going to confirm this in Scripture with you. Let's go to Exodus chapter 2, verse 1 through 10. Exodus chapter 2, verse 1 through 10. Now a man from the house of Levi went and took as his wife a Levite woman. The woman conceived and bore a son. And when she saw that he was a fine child, she hid him three months. When she could not hide him no longer, she took for him a basket made of bulrushes and daubed it, and daubed it with bitumen and pitch. She put the child in it and placed it among the reeds, among the reeds by the river bank. And his sister stood at a distance to know what would be done to him. So they were watching Moses from a distance. Now the daughter of Pharaoh came down to bathe at the river while her young woman walked beside the river. She saw the basket among the reeds and sent her servant woman and she took it. When she opened it, she saw the child and behold, the baby was crying. She took pity on him and said, this is one of the Hebrews' children. Then his sister said to Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and call you a nurse from the Hebrew woman to nurse the child for you? And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Go. So the girl went and called the child's mother. And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Take this child away and nurse him for me, and I will give you your wages. So the woman took the child and nursed him. When the child grew older, she brought him to Pharaoh's daughter, and he became her son. She named him Moses because she said, I drew him out of the water. So the name Moses means delivered from water. The name Moses means drawn out of the water. You see, it's not a coincidence that God gave Moses power over the waters to deliver Egypt. Moses was delivered from the waters and now he delivered Israel through the waters by opening up the Red Sea. Moses did not only have power over the Nile to turn it into blood and to part the Red Sea, but he had the power, the anointing, the calling and the capacity over the marine spirits and the river gods that govern those places. Moses was not only dealing with water and the Egyptians. He was dealing with magicians, sorcerers, and river gods, which are principalities. Now, Moses' name means drawn out of water, delivered from water. When the Israelites left Egypt, they came to a place where they were now stuck because they could not, there was, there was the Red Sea. Mm. There was a Red Sea. So they were like, mm, we're done. They're like, we're done. We're going to be done by the principalities in the water. We're going to be done by the Egyptians. The God of the Egyptians are going to take over us. Moses, what are you going to do? But they didn't understand Moses' name meant delivered from water. They didn't understand that Moses' name mean delivered from water. So it was prophetic for Moses to be sent through the Nile to be delivered from the water because God will use them one day to strike the Nile River, curse it, turn it into blood, and to also deliver the Israelites from water. Hey, shakatakata, I'm telling you. Some of you will be delivered from water tonight. Not regular water like you think. Not regular water like you think. Moses was supposed to be a sacrifice in the water. So when I tell you certain things, 
that in the occult, in witchcraft, they go to the river to kill children, to sacrifice humans. I'm telling you the truth. Your Bible talks about it with the book in, in, the, in the Old Testament with, with the Canaanites, where they would sacrifice their children unto Molech. And the Bible is telling you again with Pharaoh, how they would sacrifice babies unto a false god in the water. All the Hebrew boys, anyone that was born Hebrew that, that was a son, they killed it. They drowned it in the water. They drowned it in the water. There was a reason why Moses said, Moses' name was delivered from water. It's because that the future and the destinies of the Hebrew boys was destroyed by water because they were being drowned and sacrificed by false gods, by the Egyptians. So the future of Israel was doomed by the water because they were being sacrificed. So Moses' name was delivered from water and God used him to have full dominion over the water. Because at first, Pharaoh believed that he had dominion over the Nile River. He believed that he had dominion over all the waters. You see, Pharaoh, one thing I wouldn't even want to emphasize, emphasize is this. There was no way that Israel was going to be free from bondage unless Moses had power. There's a reason why when God sent Moses and said, what if they don't listen to me? God said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be with you as a sign. I'm going to do this miracle through you. This, Moses needed miracle signs and wonders because the Egyptians had false prophets. They had sorcerers. They had magicians. They had necromancers. They had false gods. They had principalities. They had fallen angels. They had everything. And this is why I'm telling you, people that work with the Marine Kingdom, they are stubborn because they're powerful. So the first sign, they were like, nah, we're not going to listen to you, Moses. The second sign, they're like, nah, we're not going to listen to you. The third sign, they're like, nah, Moses had to keep coming because the Egyptians had the capacity to mimic every single miracle that God did through Moses because they were operating at a high dimension of the demonic. Their power came from the marine kingdom. So it was a capacity of power that even Moses was like, my God, how are they able to stay here even after seeing all of this? You understand me? So there was no way Moses was going into Egypt without power. So some of you believe in your life that you think you're going to overcome the, the demonic generational bloodline and all these things that are afflicting you just from having faith in God. You need power. This is why the Bible says that um, you will be my witnesses. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you'll receive power and you'll be my witnesses. Now, before that happened with the disciples... Moses received the Holy Spirit upon him and he became a witness in Egypt. He will, you understand, to be a true witness, you must operate in power or else you're not a true witness. A witness is someone who operates with power. This is why when you look into the Bible about the, about the Jehovah Witnesses or the witnesses at the, at the end, in the book of Revelations, they have power. You understand me? Pharaoh, if this is good, I want you to type in the comments and say, this is good. Because I'm teaching you guys things you've never heard before. If this is good, I want you to type in the comments and say, man of God, this is good. It's better than Chick-fil-A. You understand me? Okay? So... Pharaoh would perform child sacrifices by throwing Hebrew boys in the Nile. Okay? Pharaoh would perform child sacrifices 
by throwing Hebrew boys in the Nile. Exodus chapter 1 verse 22. So Pharaoh commanded all his people saying, Every son who was born you shall cast into the river, and every daughter you shall save alive. My God, my God, this was a child sacrifice to appease their God happy of the Nile River. They believed as long as they sat, as long as they serviced their altars, they will remain blessed by the Nile River. You must understand that Pharaoh, the Egyptians had a covenant with the water. The Egyptians had a covenant with the water and it was child sacrifice. It was human sacrifice because anyone that's in the occult, anyone who has sold their soul, anyone that's a witch doctor, anyone that's a false prophet, there was a covenant and annually or monthly or uh, every six months, they have to go to that altar or that river and then begin to perform rituals. This is why the Canaanites would routinely or annually sacrifice their children. It was a normal practice. This is why the Egyptians would kill. They specifically said the boys. They weren't trying to wipe out the whole is Israelites, but they said only the boys. This is what I'm telling you. There are some covenants where it's like the firstborn. There's a covenant in the bloodline where the, force, the firstborn has to die. There has to be a miscarriage. There has to be a miscarriage. Or when that baby's born, the baby has to die. It cannot live. It will die for that covenant to remain. This is why Pharaoh demanded that any woman that has a baby that is a boy, it must die. And that boy, that baby boy will be swallowed up and eaten by the false gods in the water. I'm telling you, see, there are many women that are having miscarriages and they don't understand why. There are many women that cannot conceive for a reason. There are many women. You're having miscarriage. You don't know something is eating up your womb. I've, I'm I've done these deliverances many times. Mm. And you're manifesting from the spirit of miscarriage, miscarriage, miscarriage. So it's not God that closed your womb. It's not that you just need healing. There's something there where it was a covenant. <laughs> I'm telling you, I prayed for a, uh, a person two days ago, I believe, two days ago. And the Lord revealed to me that this, that this, this person, this person was sacrificed because they were the firstborn. They didn't sin. They were sacrificed in the womb. They didn't sin. They didn't, they didn't. It wasn't because of their sin. It wasn't because of this. They were sacrificed simply because they were the firstborn. Period. You see, there are certain people that will be sacrificed because just because they're the first male or because they're a virgin or they're the first girl or the firstborn. So within that covenant, you're probably like, Lord, why am I going through what I'm going through? Why me and not my brothers? Why me and not my sisters? Why, or why me? Why me? Because you were selected because of the timing of your birth. You were the firstborn. You were the first girl. You were the first boy, whatever it was, there are covenants. So the Lord revealed to me that this person was the firstborn and there was a covenant for the firstborn to die in the womb. And this person was born premature. This person was born premature. The fight for this person's life, what they had to do, an emergency delivery. This person was born premature. Hey, and as this person was in the womb of their mother, the mother would have encounters at night that a person would astral project and try to take the baby out of the womb. And from the childhood, 
all the way until today. It's been issues of blood, just like the woman in the Bible who had the issue of blood for 12 years. There's some woman that they have had issues of blood since childhood. What is taking your blood? What covenant has been draining your blood since the womb? What covenant? But you think it's just a regular infirmity. Hey, you think it's just something regular. All the medicines in the world didn't help you. All the chemotherapy, all that they have done have not helped you. Why? Because your situation is rooted from a sacrifice, from a principality empowered from a fallen angel. Are you joking? Are you, you want to sit here and say, if you want to be a skeptic, be a skeptic. I do these deliverances left, right, and center. You could be a skeptic. You could be a, it's real, do your research. You don't want to believe this stuff, but you read the Bible. Pharaoh was doing it. The Canaanites were doing it. Nebuchadnezzar, all of them were worshiping deities in the water. Dagon was a, was a half man, half fish. Dagon was a marine spirit. But you don't want to believe it. And you think the little mermaid is just about old fun. Hey, Jesus, may God forgive us in the name of Jesus. Even Starbucks, you can go drink what you want to drink. I'm not telling you, do what you want to do. I don't want y'all to come jump in here and talk crazy because you like your Starbucks. But I'm just telling you, if you study the Starbucks logo, they specifically picked out a siren on purpose. They said the two double, the double tailed siren you know, and they talked about how it would lure people off the ship. So the person that created the logo talked about all those things, how the siren would go into the water, sing their songs, lure people to shipwreck. They thought it was powerful. And they said they put the Starbucks logo on the cup so the, so the marine spirit is looking at you dead eye. It's there. Do you read? It's there. I'm telling you, it's real. So whether you pray for it or not, stop drinking, you continue. All I'm saying is real. And if you, the longer you ignore these things, you will, let's continue on with the teaching. Okay. So Pharaoh would perform child sacrifices by throwing Hebrew boys in the Nile. This was a child sacrifice to appease their God happy of the Nile river. You see, when the Holy spirit comes upon us, the Holy spirit doesn't say in order for you to remain powerful, you have to give me a, another sacrifice or you got to throw something in the water or you got to kill someone, or murder someone, or you got to come with a thousand dollars. No, no, no. You receive the Holy Spirit. You don't got to do nothing. You just believe, receive. You live, a, uh, you live a lifestyle of prayer and fasting. Okay. But you don't have to make sacrifices annually in order to have what God blessed you with. You, you don't need to do that. But with the occult, the devil will always require something from you to enhance that covenant because a lot of people don't understand that that covenant that he has with you it's going to strengthen the generational curse that will come from you so you think it's just about you getting power and you doing all these things but it's actually causing a generational curse you see the nile the nile river was the hot spot for child sacrifice as Hebrew children were thrown into the river to drown and therefore innocent blood was shed. Now, I want to give you guys some revelation. Okay. I want you to type in the comments and say revelation because it's about to get deeper. And when I say deeper, it's going to get biblical. Now that you can come here and say what I'm saying is unbiblical, it's biblical and your mind is like, oh my God. Some of you are going to type in the comments and be like, interesting, because you don't read your Bible. You feel me? But I want you to type in the comments, Revelation. Hmm. Type in the comments, Revelation. Yes, type Revelation. Okay. I'm going to read this again. The Nile was a hot spot for child sacrifice as Hebrew children were thrown in the, in the river to drown and therefore innocent blood was shed. Key phrase, 
innocent blood was shed. Was innocent blood shed? Yes or no? Type in the comments. Was innocent blood shed? Okay, type in the comments. Was innocent blood shed in the Nile? Was it? Yes or no? Was innocent blood shed in the Nile? I want to see a yes or no. Yes, so you're saying yes. So we have the understanding that blood was shed in the Nile. You see, the significance of God turning the Nile, the Nile water into blood is that it was a revelation of the iniquity that took place in the Nile. The Egyptians would have to drink the blood that they spilt. So when, when, the, when the Nile turned into blood, it was the revelation of the iniquity, all the Hebrew boys that were killed. So when the Egyptians saw it, they were like, mm, we don't want this. They didn't want to taste the sourness of their iniquity. They didn't want to taste the burden, the disgustingness of their immorality. You don't understand that God turned the water into blood because blood was spilled all through the Nile so they faced their iniquity it was a consequence it was a consequence the Bible says that the Lord's curse is on the house of the wicked but he blesses the home of the righteous so God cursed the water and you said you will not drink from it it will dry up because of the evil that you have done for killing all those Hebrew boys in the water. <laughs> Are you joking? God struck the water for a reason. Because they believed that the water was a God. They believed the water was a God and they were killing uh, um, the, the Hebrew boys in the water. They were, they were sending sacrifices in the water. They believed all their help came from the water. So God struck their God. God struck their resources. Now let's go to Exodus chapter 7, verse 17 through 21. Yes, I'm revealing. Exodus chapter 7, verse 17 through 21. Thus says the Lord, by this you shall know that I am the Lord. First of all, the Lord says it right there. He said, thus says the Lord, by this you shall know that I am the Lord. So the Lord is speaking to Pharaoh and the Egyptians. He said, you will know I am the Lord because they didn't believe in the Lord. They believed in their God. So God was saying, you will know that I am the king of kings, that I am the God over every any other God. There is only one God. You will see that I'm the God over any type of river God, any type of Molech. Like I am the God. I am Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Shalom, Jehovah Makadesha, Jehovah Melfati. You will know that I am the Rose of Sharon. Thus says the Lord, by this you shall know that I am the Lord. Behold, I will strike the waters which are in the river with the rod that is in my hand, and they shall be turned to blood. So let's read this first. It, God did not strike every water, all the waters. The Bible says this, by this you shall know that I am the Lord. Behold, I will strike the waters which are in the river. I will strike the waters which are in the Nile River. with the rod that is in my hand, and they shall be turned to blood. So God specifically came for the Nile because of the iniquity that took place in the Nile. And God said that I will show you that I am God over your gods in the water. I will show you that I am in full control, even though your, your false gods are in the water. I will show you that I really have full dominion. So God is basically saying, I will struck your false God. That's what, the revelation of that verse is God is saying, I will show you that I'm Lord over all because I will, struck, I will strike your false God. 
So the, the, the blood of also represented the perishing of those false gods in the water. Okay? It also represented of those false gods in the water dying. Because the Bible says in, the ver the, the book, uh, in, in verse 18, and the fish that are in the river shall die. Now, some of you may read that as a, as a um, uh, physical, physical means where the fish died. It's spiritual as well. And the fish that are in the river shall die. The river shall stink. And the Egyptians will loathe to drink the water of the river. So the blood turning to the, the, the Nile also turning to um, blood was also a revelation of God killing the principalities in the water, killing the marine kingdom that, that, that had took residence in the Nile River. Verse 19, then the Lord spoke to Moses, say to Aaron, take your rod and stretch out your hand over the waters of Egypt over their streams, over their rivers, over their ponds, and over all their pools of water, that they may be, that that they may become blood, and there shall be blood through the, throughout the land of Egypt, both in the buckets of wood and pitchers of stone. So God, this is a representation of a God destroying and killing all of those river gods, saying, "I am Lord." over your resources. I am the Lord of lords, the God of all. The, there's no God like me. There is no God before me. I will strike the foundations of your marine kingdom. I will strike the foundations of your false God by striking the water. And you will drink, you will drink the cup of iniquity and sorrow for what you have done to the Hebrew boys. Verse 20, and Moses and Aaron did so just as the Lord commanded. So he lifted up the rod and struck the waters that were in the river in the sight of Pharaoh and in the sight of his servants. And all the waters that were in the river were turned to blood. Verse 21, the fish that were in the river died. The river sank and the Egyptian, the, the river stank. Can't believe they, they used terminology like that back then, stank. The river stank, stank. And the Egyptians could not drink the water of the river. So there was, a, there was blood throughout all the land of Egypt. There was iniquity all over Egypt. And it was a revelation that their gods are powerless. God wiped out the marine kingdom in Egypt just like that. Just like that. And they would drink the cup of their sorrow. They would drink the cup of their iniquity. I'm, I'm telling you, there comes an appointed time with your wickedness. God will visit you. With your wickedness, if you do not repent, God will visit you. You see, Moses kept revisiting Pharaoh. Even though God never visited Pharaoh for 400 years, you think you're okay because you're living in sexual immorality for 10 years and you've been okay. There's a time God will visit you through discipline. Okay? He will visit you and he will chastise you. He will discipline you. And you will think it's witchcraft, but it's discipline. Huh. Okay, so God struck the Nile also to prove to the Egyptians that the river gods, the river gods are nothing. Okay, they are nothing to Him, and that they cannot save them. Ezekiel chapter twenty-nine, verse eight through twelve. Ezekiel. 29 8 through 12 therefore thus says the lord god surely i will bring a sword upon you and cut off from you man and beast 
and the land of Egypt shall become desolate and waste. Then they will know that I am the Lord, because he said, The river is mine, and I have made it. Indeed, therefore, I am against you and your rivers. So the Lord, the Lord said to Pharaoh, I'm against you and your rivers. But how could God be against um, his own creation? Because God created the rivers. It's because that river was dedicated to demonic forces. That river was used for child sacrifice. That river was used for iniquity and idol worship. So the Lord said, indeed, therefore, I am against you and against your rivers. And I will make the land of Egypt utterly waste and desolate. From Migdol to Syene, and as far as the border of Ethiopia, neither foot of man shall pass through it, nor foot of beast shall pass through it and it shall be uninhabited for 40 years. So God completely destroyed every false god in the, wa in the water. He destroyed the, the resources of the Egy Egyptians. He stopped the, the child sacrifice in the Nile River. He humbled the Egyptians to say, to show them, I am, I am the Lord thy God. Verse 12, I will make the land of Egypt desolate in the midst of the countries that are desolate and among the cities that are laid waste her city shall be desolate 40 years and i will scatter the egyptians among the nations and disperse them throughout the countries did you know that happy the river god is responsible for premature death and destroying destinies so a lot of you are having dreams of you underwater it's connected to premature death, sickness, infirmity, and also your destiny being afflicted. This false God would require sacrifices in order to fulfill the request of the Egyptians. You see, this is how demonic covenants are made and why they are stubborn. They are stubborn because they are empowered by the highest order of demonic, the spiritual host of wickedness, the higher order of principalities, the higher, highest orders of, of false gods. And they use children's blood. They use the blood of the innocent. This is why it was so, the, the generational bondage is so strong. This is why your deliverance process seems like it's forever because the iniquity, the gross behavior in your bloodline was ridiculous and you were selected it's not the whole family that's going to manifest like crazy now the whole family you're going to see poverty the whole family you're going to see infirmity the whole family you're going to see cycles of things not working anti-marriage but you'll see maybe one person in the family maybe two manifesting like nobody's business manifesting like crazy but the rest of the family the siblings are not manifesting and they live the, the same sinful life. They live the same sinful life. But someone in the family was selected. And it's a real thing. If you study your Bible, you will get the revelation of what I'm telling you. When you're having those dreams of you in the water, it is a revelation of a covenant, not just, oh, perversion, I need deliverance from lust. You've been praying against lust for, for, for a long time. You've been praying against lust. And you're still having those dreams. Ten years, you haven't masturbated, watched porn, or slept around. And you're still having dreams, sexual dreams. And you think the sexual dreams is just about fornication and lust. Casco tovra dosa. Hey, shat elaho taba. I'm telling you. It's not. It's not. The sexual immorality was just an open door for the marine spirits to come and now cause premature death, infirmities, and all these things. And when you go to sleep at night, you dream sexual dreams, and you just think, I just need to you know, pray against lust and perversion. You're seeing yourself in the water, and you're just going to pray against lust. This is why sexual dreams, your revelation is... It's barely scratching the surface of what that dream really means. 
barely because you go to sleep at night you see sexual dreams and the next night you see snakes on your bed you see snakes and the next night you see, you, you have a dream you're in the water and, and a snake is chasing you you think it's lust and perversion no lust and perversion was just the open door for those spirits those principalities those spiritual hosts of wickedness to enter Yes, you already repented. Yes, you repented. I understand you repented. Man of God, why do I keep having these dreams? I don't live in sin anymore. It's not about you living in sin anymore. It's a covenant. And the reason a lot of people are not getting free from these things is because they don't understand that the understanding of what is actually binding them and some people they have never lived in sin before they never they never lived in masturbation or pornography but they're having sexual dreams there are some people masoke there is over there are certain people that have never masturbated watched porn or fornicated but they're having sexual dreams they're having dreams of them being in the water i've heard testimonies where children would have dreams of them being under the water sexual dreams and be married to other people other people children astral projecting children being married under the water this is why the little mermaid is trying to initiate children to want to be married or to lust after or to be like a marine spirit and engage with the underworld they really made merman so the woman can now lust after a, a, a marine spirit because the little mermaid was just for the men lusting after the spirit but they had to make the merman for the woman so women will begin to look at the merman and lust after that merman and they don't understand to being initiated from watching that movie now they start having dreams and their marriage fails oh they can't get married but they're married in their in their in their dreams do you know how many people where there's a covenant that they are not allowed to be married they are not allowed because they're married to another entity. It's real. I'm telling you, I don't know where you come from. I don't know what faith you come from. It's real. Many people are dealing with anti-marriage because of a sacrifice, an initiation that took place. I'm telling you, don't come to me saying, man, I'm not living in sin anymore. Good. Because it's not about you just living in sin. You stopping sin is just the foundation. It's just the beginning. Spiritual warfare is real spiritual warfare is real spiritual listen we receive we are we are byproducts of our parents spiritual warfare we are byproducts of our grandparents spiritual warfare we are byproducts of our great 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 grandparents spiritual warfare yes Infirmity, you're like, oh, how can that be? We didn't do anything wrong. Infirm hereditary disease. Hereditary disease. Generational poverty. Generational obesity. Generational cancer. Pedophilia in the bloodline. Molestation in the bloodline. Premature death in the bloodline. Anti-marriage themes that you're ignoring because you, I just want to believe in God. Ten years past, twenty years past, your situation never changes. And by the time you get to you get to seven years old, to six years old, I believe now. Guess what? Now you're twenty years away from dying. Some of the things you were believing God for is too late because you passed that time frame of age because of your ignorance. This is why the Bible says, "My people perish because of lack of knowledge." I rather listen and go forth with revelation by the Holy Ghost than to sit there and act like life is all about just getting married and ignoring all the spiritual things and just being like, I want to get married, I want to do this, I want to do that, I want to do that. And you notice 10 years pass by, nothing, nothing working, the divorce, all these things, nothing working. You know, oh my God, God, things are not working, I wanted this, I wanted that. But if you had understanding why these things are not working in your life, then you would have navigated it a different way. This is why the Bible says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all things shall be added unto you. Because when you seek God, God will speak to you and reveal things unto you why the added things may be delayed, why the added things are not coming, why there has been a hijack in the realm of the spirit. 
sometimes it's not always about just spiritual warfare, spiritual warfare, spiritual warfare, because you're going to do all these general prayers. You need to pray to God for understanding. And the reason why Daniel went into 21 days of fasting is because he wanted understanding of a dream. Yes. The reason Daniel went on 21 days of prayer and fasting wasn't to break generational curses. Now, it's good enough to do that, but some of us, we've been doing it for so long, nothing happening. It's because we don't even know what we're attacking. It doesn't just say, I break generational curses. Da -da 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 -da. It's not the, gener the, the general statements that really break generational curses. God will bring revelation and understanding of that generational curse, how the root of it. God will actually speak to you. He will show you things. Because sometimes a generational curse is not just one generational curse. There's many things that took place. Let's say in your bloodline, there was abortion. They would sacrifice children, abortion. Then there was consistent, there was consistent um, prostitution or pedophilia. There's all these things. And it's attached to different types of gods. God will reveal these things to you. And some of you are having dreams you just don't understand. And God's already speaking to you. So you need to get to a place of going before the Lord and asking for understanding. Now, I want to tell you something right now. The teaching I just gave you guys, I was laying on my bed maybe at 1 a.m., 2 a.m., and the Lord began to speak to me about Moses, about Pharaoh. And I was laying on my bed, I woke up my wife, and I said, God just spoke to me what happened. If you think I was preparing this teaching for a week, two weeks, no, it came to me 1 a.m. Today, 1 a.m. 1 a.m. It came to me. I was laying in bed. I've never talked about this in my life. I've never taught it in my life. I never thought about it in my life until the Lord spoke to me. Many of your destinies have been captivated in the water. I don't care if you're white, you're black. I don't care where you come from. You can say, I don't want to be a skeptic. I don't care if you don't, you disagree. I am the one I was. My destiny was trapped in the water. My sisters was trapped. My wife was trapped. When I brought my wife through deliverance, she had a dream where she was running out of a mansion with seashells all over the wall. She was manifesting like a, like a mermaid, like this. She would taste blood without bringing through deliverance. This is when we were dating. Many people I brought through deliverance that they would manifest and contort like snakes and the, the spirits will be speaking out that it's a it's a marine spirit that comes from the river in Congo that it comes from this river from Ethiopia that it's real it's real and what I'm telling you it's biblical oh sale diriosa you don't think that the Egyptians were possessed with that that, that river that river demon so if you were to bring Pharaoh through deliverance, what would speak out of Pharaoh? If you brought Pharaoh through deliverance or his children through deliverance, what would speak out? What would speak out? That's that, that entity happy from the water will speak out of Pharaoh. It will speak out of Pharaoh's children. We entered because your father or your grandfather did sacrifices because he wanted to be powerful in Egypt uh, and he would kill and do child sacrifice and throw all the Hebrew, bros, Hebrew boys in the water and he made a covenant and he sacrificed all the Egyptians and all of his children so we own you. It's real. It's real. But because we don't study our Bible, we say we, we're sitting here, we're skeptics. Listen, I done deliverance even last night and other, play, other days where you're seeing some people levitate in the deliverance. I know a lot of you guys don't see it publicly because I don't like videotaping people unless it's like in a huge congregation and you're praying for people. But I've seen levitation during deliverance. I've seen things, man. With 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 a with a back of a person comes up like this, comes off the ground, is like levitating in the air, suspending as if they have crazy abs, and their heads like this, and his eyes are rolled backwards, and they raise up. It's listen, it's real. 
Now, some of you are dealing with a lower grade of oppression. You're not gonna manifest like everyone. Not everyone manifests. Listen to me, I've never manifested a demon in my life. I'm gonna say it again. I've never manifested a demon. Never. My wife has. None of my brothers have manifested a demon. My sister has. But we are all bound by the same themes. Same themes. The same themes. The same issues. All of us. So it's not about manifesting. It's not about, oh, it's not about manifesting. It's about revelation. This is why some of you are discouraged. You've been praying about a certain spirit or situation for so long. You've been praying about that situation. There is a covenant and a mystery that God needs to reveal. But anyways, we're going to pray. We're going to pray. We're going to pray. We're going to pray. Ora baba shekete Randerio Salavradosa. We're going to pray now in the name of Jesus. Lekatalava Sondo Robo Zike Lekataiva. Lendirio Sanderio Sap. Landerio Sakaderio Santerio Sap. Rakanderio Sap. Father, we thank you, Lord God for the revelation oh sandiriosa lord we thank you oh god father god for the deep revelation god we thank you god for speaking unto us father god we thank you jesus for what you have done to so candiriosa we thank you god for the revelation oh god lord jesus many of us are victims many of us are living in sin and we're trying to get past these things but we can't because we're entertaining the covenant oh god deliver us from our flesh remove us oh god for the iniquity remove us oh god from the spirit of abortion and child sacrifice in the bloodline remove us oh god from the idol worship remove us oh god we detach ourselves we renounce it in the name of jesus Oh, I want to be free. I want to be free. Father, I pray now in the name of Jesus that every marine power, that every marine spirit that is oppressing your people, that comes from a foundation of idol worship, child sacrifice river gods i commanded to be broken in the name of jesus i commanded to be broken in the name of jesus i commanded to be broken in the name of jesus and the lord is speaking to me about some woman right now where you're losing your hair i see a woman and it's manifesting like alopecia i see it clear as day it's manifesting like alopecia but this spirit is sourced. It's like this spirit is sourced from the marine kingdom, okay? And it's manifesting through your hair. They're trying to attack your glory. They're trying to bring infirmity in your life. You're diagnosed with that, some type of whatever it's called, alopecia, whatever it's called. You're diagnosed with that's in the infirmity. The Bible says this, that a woman's long hair is of her glory and her covering. And you've been having dreams of them trying to cut your hair. I break that covenant in the name of Jesus and I pray for healing in your hair in the mighty name of Jesus. I cancel that assignment. I cancel that covenant that has been generational in the hair. Stunted growth. I break it because there are some people, some women, you will notice that the mom's hair, it grows short. The daughter's hair grows short. The grandmother's hair grows short. The great -grand grandmother's hair grows short. And whatever they try to do, there's patches. It cannot grow. May you be delivered tonight in the name of Jesus. The Bible says that a woman's long hair is of her glory and her covering. It did not say a woman's short hair. I'm telling you, Rosa Tarayondo, some of you are going to, some of the women are going through deliverance right now. 
And the Lord wants me to bring an awareness to the woman again. I'm talking to the woman right now, pertaining to human hair. Some of you, listen to what I'm saying before you say, oh, we need to pray over it. Just listen before you jump the gun. Some of the hair that you are buying has been sacrificed to river gods, has been dedicated to demons. Because a lot of your hair you're getting come from India and China, okay? Now the people that own this hair, it is their genetic structure. It comes from their body as it was attached to their blood. And they, before they sell it to the Western world, they will sacrifice their own hair unto demons, unto gods, and they will do their incense over it, and then they will sell it. They will sell it. So you cannot pray over the hair. Why? Because it's legally owned. It has a covenant with the person. It's like praying over a Ouija board. It's like praying over a crystal from a demonic store. Impossible. So once you come to the understanding that you cannot get witch, you cannot bless witchcraft. If you know something as you cannot bless witchcraft, I'm trying to help you guys because some of you are trying to bless witchcraft. You might as well go and get a Ouija board, bless it, and play Monopoly. You might as well go get a Ouija board and bless it and play Monopoly. But the reason a lot of women will get human hair. It's because there's the lack thereof of their own hair. But I pray in the name of Jesus Christ uh, that your hair will grow by the power of the Holy Ghost. By the fire of the Holy Ghost. I'm telling you, do you know how many deliverances I've done? There was a deliverance I did on my wife prior to us being married. I think we were dating at the time and we were via Zoom. And my wife used to wear a lot of human hair. And my wife was having dreams of her hair uh, falling out. Okay? My wife's hair was falling out in her dreams. She was getting attacked by the Marine Kingdom in her dreams. Her hair was falling out in her dreams. And then um, and then um, uh, she would notice that she was dealing with some hair loss. Then she would have to go get on some, the, she would go to like a dermatologist or a doctor and they would subscribe her certain things for her hair loss. Okay? She started wearing extensions and stuff like that. Now, when I brought her through deliverance, manifesting, the demon was scratching, like grabbing the hair and manifesting, removing snakes from the hair and all this stuff. And the spirit was Medusa. You go, you don't want to believe me. All this Greek mythology stuff that you read, it's real demonic forces that have assignments. And this spirit said that it had the assignment to, to destroy my wife's beauty. At the time she wasn't my wife, she was my girlfriend. To destroy Aaron's beauty, to make certain women age quicker than they're supposed to age and for the hair to to do uh fall out so now it brings it bursts insecurity it bursts dependency it, 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 uh, upon products and and things and it it, it, it it'll birth shame hinder your identity all i'm telling you it's i've done this deliverance and it was a woman i prayed for where now her hair is down to her, her shoulders. She was dealing with alopecia. I prayed for her. She vomited on my Facebook Live. This is two years ago, maybe. Vomited on my Facebook Live. Now she has hair down to her, to her, her shoulders. I'm telling you, it's the truth. I, I brought people in my family through this deliverance. You want to listen. If you want to keep wearing the human hair, wear it. You can say no fear. Wear it if you want to wear it. Do your research. I'm, I'm saying, do your research. Because if you're gonna bless human hair that they have sacrificed to demons, I want you to go to a witch's house. Go into her fridge, let her perform rituals on it and witchcraft, and take it home, and then bless it. And eat it. That's called putting God to the test. If you come to the knowledge, you see, a lot of people are bound by witchcraft in the marine kingdom because of ignorance. Because they don't know what has been placed in there. And it works because of open doors. Okay, but there is also legal rights that work. Even if you have an open door, when you purchase something, a transaction takes place. I'm telling you, man. But you don't want to listen because you have a hair shop and you're like, oh, no, no. I want you to come sit here. 
and we're gonna watch all the videos of me praying for all the women through deliverance. You're gonna watch it. Oh, well, 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 well. Go bless a Ouija board and play Monopoly. Go bless it and play Monopoly. Go get poison and you know poison's in it. Then go pray for the for, for that poison to be nutri uh, nutritious to your body. Go do it. Okay? And some of the women you will testify and you will see the alopecia in your hair begin to disappear. God is growing your hair now in the name of Jesus. And I command every evil covenant that is attached to your hair, I sever it in the name of Jesus. And I pray that the generational curse, because the Lord is even speaking to me concerning the hair. The Lord says that even the hair signifies anti-progression and limitation. The Lord says that the hair, the shortness of the hair represents anti-progression. The Lord speak to you right now. It's a manifestation. It's a manifestation of anti-progression, limitation, backwardness. I cut it in the name of Jesus. May your hair grow back to normal in the name of Jesus. I come against every evil altar and attack against your beauty in Jesus' name. Mm. So, Father, we pray for your people now in the name of Jesus. I come against the spirit of witchcraft. I come against every demon. If you begin to manifest, uh, I want you to type your name in the comments. I want you to tell me how you're manifesting because I'm, I'm going to call out your name while you're manifesting. I want to help you out. I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you in the name of Jesus. And some of you that don't believe that this stuff is real, you will begin to see people manifest like nobody's business. You will see people's manifest uh, and you will see that these things are real in the name of Jesus. You understand me? Father, I pray for every person in the name of Jesus Christ. I come against every evil altar. I come against everything from the marine kingdom. Every demonic force uh, that is against your people, that is fighting your people, I break it. Donna said, I'm coughing. I command every force that fights you to be broken. Donna, every demonic force uh, that originates from the foundations of river gods and water spirits, I command it to be broken in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. God began to reveal something to me pertaining to the marine kingdom. And I want you to listen to me. Because I've never got this revelation in my life, in my life. Until now. You know, when you watch The Little Mermaid or any type of mermaid show, you will notice that they have like a treasure box down there. They will have like a treasure box down there and they operate and in the treasure box is gold and it's like they'll never use the gold but it's just in the treasure box it's just in the treasure box okay it's closed in the treasure box okay the lord begins to reveal to me that there are many people's destinies financial situations that are captivated within the water i told you how pharaoh would kill the Hebrew children. So he would sacrifice their destinies, hinder their destiny. So those Hebrew boys had no destiny, had no destiny because the water swallowed them up. They were sacrificed, okay? The Lord began to reveal to me how many people's destinies have been trapped in, in, in a type of thing like that. Now, it, it, it wasn't for no reason that they de depicted how those entities in the water have treasure boxes and those diamonds and those golds, it came from the earth. So whatever that was lost on the earth or whatever, whatever, they had it in the ocean. I pray by the fire of the Holy Ghost, whatever may have been trapped and hindered, I command it to be released. And some of you are like, how is this biblical? You must understand that when Daniel prayed for 21 days, the Bible says that when Gabriel was sent, Gabriel said that I was delayed. I was withstood for 21 years. So if the devil, can withstand an angel, he can withstand your destiny. 
If the devil can withstand an angel for 21 days, he can withstand your finances. He can delay your finances. He can delay your health. Everything I say is biblical, but I break it in the name of Jesus. May we be delivered tonight. May we be delivered. Listen, we're going to pray for the next 20 minutes. I don't know if you have a prayer life. I don't know about you. Maybe you just came here for the teaching. Maybe you just came here for the teaching. But I know what I've been through in my family. And I know the suffering I've been through because I did not understand. But I came to a place of understanding. We're going to pray for the next 20 minutes. I'm going to speak in tongues. You're going to pray with me. We're going to do deliverance again. Because I believe in your situation changing. I believe it. I believe in full deliverance. I believe it. I believe in it. I believe in it. We're going to pray for the next 20 minutes straight. I'm going to speak in tongues. Some of you might be like, where's your interpreter? You're focusing on the wrong thing. I'm praying to God. Focus on your own life. The Bible says, do not, the Bible says, be doers, not only hearers, only deceiving yourself. You deceive yourself every time you go to church or watch something online and you take notes and don't apply it. When, you, when, when they teach about prayer, but you don't pray. They teach about purity, but you don't live pure. They teach about fasting, but you don't fast. Do not be only a hearer, be a doer. Do not deceive yourself. And you think it's a joke. We're going to pray for the next 20 minutes in tongues. Zalosa dididiosa. Len dididiosa kan dididiosa. Mason dididiosa taiva. Li kan dididiosa talaka taiva. Li man dididiosa tereketova. Bren dididiosa taiva zi teleketuza. Repan dididiosa dididiokoto. Li kan dididiosa. Lande sotoza vran dididiosa. Li kan dirikosa taiva. Vren deska taiva zu televedova. Mari bababan shotorobo zete. Li kan dididiosa. Li kan dididiosa. Rabababa shantala katova. Li kan dididiosa. Li mande kun dididiviansa. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus Christ Father God that your fire would be here that your glory would be here in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth God that you would deliver us tonight as we pray tonight as we lift up our voices tonight Father God we pray for liberation God we pray for deliverance come on in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus those who are true prayer warriors will pray for the next 18 minutes those who are just watchers and those that just come for a teaching are going to sit there and, and log off. But those of you who are true prayer, true, prayer, true prayer warriors, you're the remnant. You're the David of your family. You're the Joseph of your family. And the Lord is calling you to intercede. For you have an assignment with, with for your family. You have an assignment to help your dad, your mother, your children. You have an assignment and it's dependent upon prayer. It's not dependent upon extensions. It's not dependent upon rituals. It's dependent upon prayer. Come on, Rababa Shantiriosa, Ribaba Shantiriosa, Le Candidio Santiriosa, Le Candirio Sondrovo Sheka, Le Bradose Vrandiriosa. We got seventeen more minutes to go. Le Canto Rivianda, La Manto Setaiva, Le Candirio Santiriosa, Le Ketele Ketosa, Vrandiriosa, Le Mandirio Sante Ketosa, Vrandirio Santa Cataiva, Le Catalava. 
le bradosa frandi li kanamanso li dirio sante rigetosa recata la vasondo ripapapapapa man sante rigetosa ripapapanche le katova le bradose frandi riosa li kandirio sataiva le mandiriosa makandiriosa li ketele ketosa frandirio santa la kandiriosa mantele ketosa frandiriosa li mandi Taiva, li ketele ketusa, vrandere de soto, vrakandere viosa, mante kataiva, zuntere viondo, le kataiva, zetele ketusa, vrandere viosa, brandere viosa, li kandere ketova. Come on, we got 15 more minutes to go. 15 more minutes to go. I want you to lift up your voice. Lift up your voice tonight. Lift up your voice tonight. We got 15 more minutes to go. Lika naman so ke levedosa. Lita lavadosa vranderioso. Limandu si vande kando sataiva. Le kanderio sante levedova. Father, we pray tonight in the name of Jesus, God, that you would do the new thing in the name of Jesus. That limitations will be broken. That strongholds will be broken in the name of Jesus. That the spirit of witchcraft would be broken by the fire of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus that every demonic foundation will be broken off your people tonight in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth we come against the spirit of divination we come against the spirit of sorcery we command these things to break even now in the name of Jesus we say loose your hold we say loose your hold we say loose your hold we say loose your hold. We say loose your hold. We come against it in the name of Jesus. We break its hold by the fire of the Holy Ghost. Se kanaman so teleriosa. Landerios se te kataiva. Likando se fande. Come on. Pray for your family. Pray for your situation. Pray for your finances. This is your time of liberation. Le kondo riviende. Le tadaiva. Locos kataiva. Come on, lift up your voice. Ho raba ba shakata, mason de rio sante de katova. Le taiva dize, li mande de vesondo roko taiva. Li katova frande de yondo, li kante de vidusa. Man sete le katova, lende rio sante de katosa. Man sete le katusa frande de riosa. We command the foundation of poverty to be broken. Man sekete. We command the foundation of premature death to be broken. We command it to be broken. Every infirmity, we command it to be broken. Every spirit of rejection, every orphan spirit, every spirit of anti progression, we command the family altars, we command the wickedness in your family to be broken in the name of Jesus. We come against the powers within the water, we come against the infirmities, we come against the necromancy. Come on. Rababa shekete leketova. Ribe sante rekentoza vrande. Repebebe shanta. Le kante reketoza vrande rio santa. May Rocky be loosed. May your son Rocky be released. May your son Rocky Chris be loosed. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I pray for your son Chris in the name of Jesus Christ that your son will be loosed from every addiction and affliction that comes against his life. Ho rababa shekeri andra basondo rimansu ya mande sina mansu rivandere o sande rebaba shante ke doza vrande yindara basondo robo shekalava dove likanto rivi andra basoya mansi rivi doza vrande revesuva limando sina manse limando sina vanse Limando sin avance, shake it till it's sound. Matai ka till it's sound, till it's diva. Rande le katosa, frante le vekova. The Bible says, no weapon formed against you shall prosper, and every tongue that is risen up against you, thou shalt condemn. Le kanda le vyanda, and the Bible says that you are my hiding place, for you surround me with songs of deliverance. You surround me with songs of deliverance. You surround me with songs. Of of deliverance the devil can't have me or my family 
this is an eviction notice to the enemy the devil can't have me or my family this is an eviction notice to the enemy the Bible says fear not for the Lord your God is the one that goes with you he will not leave you nor forsake you so we lift up our voices tonight in the name of Jesus come on lift up yours keep praying we got 11 minutes to go the Bible says in Isaiah chapter 43 verse 2 when you pass through the waters I will be with you and when you pass through the rivers they will not sweep over you when you walk through the fire you will not be burned the flames will not set you ablaze you may be going through a circumstance right now you may be going through a situation right now where you're having marine kingdom dreams sexual dreams dreams of you dying you may feel like something in your life is just destroying you but the lord says whatever they are planning i will turn it for your good whatever they are planning it would not be fulfilled in the name of jesus for my hand is against them for my hand is against them and i shall overturn the curse i shall destroy the covenant come on lift up your voice organs are being released now organs are being released now in the name of jesus every hindrance against your organs every hindrance against your bodies your bodies are being released now in the name of jesus every attack against your mind every attack against your health i decree and i declare in the name of jesus christ that this must be removed this must be destroyed by the fire of the holy ghost whatever is manifesting through your body that is a revelation of a covenant we cancel it we command that infirmity we command that poverty we command that lack Come on, we got nine minutes and 50 seconds to go. Pray more than you type. Because typing out, you're not going to do anything to you. There's going to come a time where I'm going to get, I'm going to get your prayer request. I'm going to pray for you specifically. Oh, son of man, lift up your voice, God. We cry unto you, God, that you would do a new thing, oh God, that you would do a new thing in our finances, that you would do a new thing in our lives, you would do a new thing in our parents, you would do a new thing in our siblings, you would do a new thing in our children, you would do a new thing in our spouses, oh God, you would do a new thing in our lives in the name of Jesus. Oh, Sataiva Dididiosa, Lord, your word even says to forget the for, forget the former things of old, for I am doing a new thing. Can you not perceive it? It shall come out of the dry land, it shall come out of the wasteland. We decree and we declare by the authority of Christ, oh God, that we are coming out of the gutter. We are coming out of the gutter. We are coming out of the gutter. Generational abortion, we destroy it. Ataiva. Generational murder, generational prostitution, generational necromancy, generational divination, generational sac animal sacrifices. We destroy these in the name of Jesus. Household wickedness. We destroy it in the mighty name of Jesus. We destroy it now. Whatever stubborn infirmity is in your body. Whether it's the, the lack of hair growth, whether it's cancer, whether it's heavy bleeding, I command it to be broken now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Shake it, take it, take it. Landerio, Sanderiosa. 
Makaika Televe Sova Dova, Le Philebe Dosa Fan Televe Sova, Le Philebe Deza Fan Telemekova, Le Philebe Deza Fan Telemekova, in the name of Jesus. Come on, it's breaking now in the name of Jesus. It's breaking now. We got six minutes to go. Pray more than you cry. Pray more than you type. The reason the generational curse and the infirmity and the things have been generational because some people didn't have a prayer life. Some people just sat there and received all day. But the Lord wants you not to only be a hearer, but He wants you to be a doer. He wants you to be a doer. May the doors open in your life, Prophetess Quenisha. May the Lord, may the doors open in your life. Any door that has been shut by the enemy, God is opening up these doors in the name of Jesus. God is giving you new territory. Land, whatever has been dominating what you are supposed to dominate, we command it to break in the name of Jesus. It breaks tonight. Yes, it breaks tonight. Yes, it breaks tonight. It breaks tonight in the name of Jesus. The spirit of sorcery, every demonic force. Yes, it breaks tonight. Yes, it breaks tonight. Yes, it breaks tonight. Yes, it breaks. Come on, we got five more minutes to go. Some of you are having dreams, okay? You're having dreams. You're, you're being aroused. You can feel yourself being aroused. You're waking, orgasming, and you wake up. Bruises and scratches, you feel pain. You feel like you just got penetrated or you penetrated. It may, it may be explicit, but I'll break it off you in the... What spirit 
has access to your body where it can defile you like that. I command that generational covenant from the water to be broken. May it be broken in the name of Jesus. May it be broken, Jesus. In my, in my, in my. Lord, I want to be delivered. Lord, I want to be delivered. Lord, I want to be delivered. That's my cry tonight. Lord, I want to be delivered. Lord, I want to be healed. I want my situation to change. I want my situation to change. I want my situation to change. Who cinema? Shit, live this whole day. Come on, we got one minute to go. Rakan so le zavradose le candiriosa mantele ketuza vrandiriosa mante zavrados zavradose li candos zavrindezita ramba soto. It breaks today in the name of Jesus. May that spirit that fights you, may it be cancelled in the name of Jesus. E rosande rokoze in zeleku zavradosa. May your dreams return back to you where you will have godly revelations. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Everything that's been fighting your finances. You've been doing whatever you you've been doing things, Anissa, in your life. You've been praying and you've been fasting about your finances. Whatever stands against you, Anissa. Whatever stands against your financial breakthrough that is that that comes by covenant, I command that force. You've been fasting for months, for a while, and you're still not getting breakthrough. I command that force, Anissa, to break off you now. I command that force, Anissa, to be broken off you, your family, now in the name of Jesus. I command it to be broken now. I command it to be broken off your life, Anissa. Reka Sataiva, Los Seteleviondo. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Now, many of you are manifesting and you're going through deep deliverance. I wanted to make sure that the teaching that I gave you was biblical, and it was. And you can see how many people are manifesting and going through deliverance from the things that I taught. It's real. You hear me? It's real. It's real. And you could sit here and not like me because I expose some of your favorite false prophets who are spiritual molesters, but you cannot deny what I'm saying. I'm telling you the truth. Every spiritual spouse on your life angel devon that is causing delay and anti-progression in your life i command that to be broken every spiritual spouse and delay and anti-progression in your life angel devon i cancel it in the name of jesus i pray for your deliverance now angel devon and i pray that your wombs will be opened. Those of you that are dealing with issues with your womb, I pray that your womb will be opened and every demonic force that has tied your womb, I command your womb to be released in the name of Jesus. 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 In the name of Jesus.
prophet, uh, prophetess Naomi, you prophesied to me about rejection, but you don't even acknowledge me as a prophet. If you want to be acknowledged as a prophet, that means you're dealing with um, rejection anyway. It doesn't matter what people call you. If someone calls you a prophet, pro it doesn't matter. People call me brother. People call me bro. People call me man of God. I don't care if people call me prophet or not. But if you, if it bothers you that much, you're dealing with rejection. It doesn't matter if people call you prophet or not. It doesn't matter. You know, Sam, it does not matter. We, I, I'll never correct someone and say, when, when someone calls me pastor, I won't say call me prophet. When someone calls me evangelist, I won't say call me prophet. If someone just calls me brother, I won't say call me prophet. It doesn't really matter. We shouldn't care, right? The title is just the, it's the function. It's not something we boast about. It's a function. It's an authority. So whether people acknowledge this as a prophet or not, it doesn't matter. It come, it's the authority. Okay, it's the authority. It's the function. But you can't care about any type of title. It's ridiculous. You understand me? And I'm saying that in the most humble way because people care about titles too much, you know, and it doesn't matter that stuff, you know, but it's just, it just does not matter, man. This, this, this just doesn't matter in Jesus name. So father, we pray over your people now in Jesus name. We pray for your people now in Jesus name. Every demonic force, every demonic spirit, I command it to be broken. I command every demonic force on your people to be canceled in Jesus' name. I break it by the fire, by the power of the Holy Ghost. I command every evil altar of heaviness, of lack, to be broken off God's people. Listen, if you guys have any specific questions, I'm going to answer 10 questions, then I'm going to get off of here, okay? If you have any specific questions, I'm going to answer about 10 questions, then I'm going to get off here, okay? 10 questions. May the fire of God rest in your life, Quenisha, in the name of Jesus. May the fire of God rest in your life. In Jesus' mighty name. So I'm going to answer 10 questions, and then I'm going to get up and out of here. All right? Okay. Um, So someone said, what's the difference between a spirit? Hold on. Give me one minute. Give me one second. Let me change the atmosphere here a little bit for a second. Then I'm going to answer some questions. Okay. going to answer some questions really quick so someone said um what's the difference between a spirit coming against you or being demonized and needing deliverance so a spirit coming against you is a spiritual warfare all right it's just spiritual warfare everyone's going to go through some type of retaliation affliction and whatnot spiritual warfare okay um it is a spiritual warfare, right? But when you are dealing with a demon, that is something that enters you through you opening up the door or you born you being born into a family where there's a covenant and they have given legal access over the household or the bloodline. Okay, there's there's a difference. You can't get delivered from spiritual warfare where you never have spiritual warfare again. You can overcome spiritual warfare. Right, but there's always going to be sea seasons of warfare. That's why the Bible calls us. Um, the Bible tells us that we are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. I sowed my seed earlier. Thank you for tonight's teaching and deliverance. God bless you. 
may pour back into you. May God pour back into you, Prophetess Quenisha, for that gift that you just sent in Jesus' name. May God uh, multiply you. May, may the Lord bless you in Jesus' mighty name. Um, someone said, Angel said, do you have a mentorship group I can join? You know, I was thinking about doing mentorship huh, like a, you know, it, it's what, what a lot of people don't understand is like everything I do is by myself right now. You know, my wife takes care of um, uh, my son, so I don't have like a media team. I don't have like email responders. You know, I'd be praying for people, but I try to get back to as much people as I can because I'm doing everything I can. I'm doing everything on my own, you know, uh, but I'm trying to help as much people as I can. Maybe in the future, near future, I'll have like a mentorship group. Um, but the next thing I'm having is a class on marriages. It's going to be from December 16th through the 17th. Um, it's going to be on marriages and we're going to be focusing on godly marriages, demonic marriages, anti-marriage, Jezebel and Ahab, Lack, Samson and Delilah, divorce, trauma, soul ties, misleading dreams, limited intimacy, sudden hindrances, altars, and much more. So that's going to be from December 16th to the 17th. I'll put that in the comments later, uh, but yeah. Okay, I'm going to ask some more questions. I'm going to answer some more questions. Make sure you put your questions in. So how to pray for God ordained spouse. I think what you must do first is to make sure that you're in a place where you are ready to receive a spouse, where you'll come to a posture where you're um, living pure, where you understand your identity in Christ, where you first seek first the kingdom of God and you prioritize the kingdom of God, your purpose and whatnot. I think when you do that, um, it opens up the door for the added things, marriage and all that stuff to come, you know, because God wants people to for their identity to be, to, sh to be shaped, for them to be walking in purpose and not delay themselves because they're waiting for a spouse. So the best prayer to really pray, um, it's just number one, posture yourself in right standing before God. Pray to God what the desires of your heart are. Okay, let it be known to God. Now, if God reveals to you that you're dealing with generational anti-marriage, now that's a whole different type of prayer. Now you need to contend against those, those forces, those spirits. You need to contend against that. Because when a lot of people are dealing with anti-marriage or a bunch of remarriages, it's a, it's a revelation of a covenant with marine spirits or like a covenant with incubus or succubus. So instead of being married to a man or being married to a woman uh, physically, you are spiritually. So you're having all these dreams and all these encounters. Um, and there's a reason why it's like generational anti-marriage or divorce always happens or they've been remarried three times. It's, it's, it's a real thing because there's a covenant with that. They would say, OK, give us the daughters, give us the daughters. OK. Dreaming of my dead mother. Someone said dreaming of my dead mother chasing me. Well, this is not your grandmother. This is a revel. Number one, it could be two things. Somebody taking the face of your mother, a familiar spirit taking the face of your mother, right, to afflict you so you stay in ignorance. Number two, it is a revelation also of bloodline wickedness. So whatever is chasing you is coming from your mother's bloodline, the covenant with your mother's bloodline. So it's coming in the face of your mother and it, it, it resembles generational things. I don't know if there is something that your mother dealt with that you're dealing with, whether it be poverty, infirmity, whatever, you know, you just need to pray against that in Jesus name. Why did you know, just praying against those things in Jesus name.
dreaming of being a snake in the water. So you're you're telling me that you're having dreams of you being a snake in the water. You know, this is a revelation. It could be a revelation that you have been sacrificed. That you have been sacrificed. Because a lot of people, when they get bewitched or they become sacrificed, they'll begin to have dreams of them doing things or becoming things or astral projecting or flying around and doing immoral things or them under the water. There's been some type of covenant or there's a revelation of a spirit that's within you. A unclean spirit, a snake spirit that's within you. You understand me? And that you need deliverance. Hmm. And I'm, I'm reading a lot of these dreams and I'm like, my goodness, you know, a lot of people are bound by these things and, and bound by a lack of understanding. See, when you're having these dreams, it should, it should, it should, man, it should, cause I'm not, I'm reading, I'm, I'm reading these dreams and I'm like, man, this is exactly what I went through. A lot of these dreams you guys are telling me exact same dreams I went through. You understand me? Someone said, after giving someone his clothing items to a friend, I dreamed about a croc crocodile running us. Please give me some more context, GL follower of Christ. More context in that message. You're welcome, Olivia. Kelly Doran, what's the what's the context of the dreams of the babies? You can't just be vague. You have to what's the context to it? Is it normal that around every time there's problem or people argue have with me? So are you basically saying, Mei Lin, that people always have, always have issues with you? Is that what you're saying? So dreaming of eating, right? Dreaming of eating, okay? Unless you're eating a scroll in the Bible, like the Bible talks about eating the scroll, usually when you have dreams of eating, it is bewitchment. As a spell being casted upon you, um, it's a number one. It's it's one of the most common ways in the occult where they initiate people and bewitch people. Now, usually people are poisoned by food, but also spiritually people are brought into the occult through food. So what happens in Africa a lot is that witch doctors, sorcerers, teachers, what they do is they'll give certain children candy. All right. And they will give these children candy and these children will become initiated. And then at night they have all these encounters and they'll be like, mom, I just had this dream. It wasn't a dream. And they're just initiated to the Marine kingdom doing all this occult stuff. And they grow up, end up being a witchcraft and they have all these demonic visitations. So a lot of times in, when you're eating food in your dreams, especially when you don't uh, like the, like the food, what you're, what you're eating, you know, it is a revelation of bewitchment. And sometimes the enemy will take faces of your family. Okay. They'll take places of your family and you'll be like in your living room and you'll be with your parents and whatnot. And you're about to go eat and then you're eating the food and then you start praying against it and whatnot. And then the next dream, it shifts. And then you see your, you see yourself with your family and then you're about to eat this food, but you stop and you're like, okay, I'm not hungry. I don't want to eat it. And you keep praying and you have another dream where um, you're with your family again and you're at the dinner table and you look at the food and the food is like dead rat or like a dead bird or something crazy. And you look at it, you're like, ew, I'm not going to eat that. You see, that is a revelation of your eyes being open and the Lord removing a darkened understanding to what you're actually putting in your body. You're being defiled. Now, these dreams I have had and my wife has had as well, where my wife was having dreams that she was uh, with her family and she'll be eating like spaghetti and I'll be there. Her family will be there. And she would just be eating, 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 eating. And then one dream she had where um, she, she was, uh, she, someone was trying to force feed her or it was um, um that she saw like seashells. or so she's trying to eat something from the water and it was just disgusting, right? It was absolutely disgusting. You understand me? So a lot of bewitchment. 
happens within dreams whether you believe it or not it is a fact and i brought many people through deliverance from this it's a real thing there's many people that go to sleep at night and they dream and they wake up and they have um a full belly fact they will dream of themselves eating and they'll wake up full What about dreams of fighting or falling uh, to the point where it feels surreal? You know, fighting or someone trying to fight you is a revelation of spiritual warfare or an attack against your life. Or God wants you to begin to engage into spiritual warfare to contend against the works of the enemy. Because the Bible says, I've given you the spiritual authority to trample over the scorpions and the snakes. It's a revelation that you're also under attack. Now, when you see yourself falling, right? I've had dreams where I would be falling off a cliff and before I get, before I die, I would wake up and I would just feel myself about to die. And the second I was going to hit the ground, I wake up. You feel me? That can represent spirit of death, freak accident, what the devil may be planning, sudden attacks. You understand me? Chrissy, me having dreams of casting out demons out of my house. What do you think it means? Right? What do you think it means? With that dream, I think the Lord is revealing unto you that you may be dealing with spiritual warfare or there may be fa uh, uh, familiar spirits or family altars spiritually within your home. And the Lord wants you to begin to contend for your household, contend for your family. I don't know if you have children. Contend for your children. Contend for your parents. Intent, because obviously your house represents it number one represents your body and it represents family okay so you need to pray and break generational things whatever is in your family whatever is in your uh, upon any of your loved ones or yourself god wants you to begin to intercede 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 What about dreams of a dragon looking for you? It's a monitoring spirit. I used to have dreams of dogs watching me or like tigers watching me. You know, it's a monitoring spirit. The Bible says that the enemy roams around the earth looking for whom he may devour. Okay. Roaming around the earth like a lion looking for whom he may devour. So there's monitoring spirits. Dreaming of two maggots coming out of your private find a way. Good God. Do you have a lot of sexual dreams? Um what's her name? Uh, I forgot I forgot who asked the question. Kelly, do you have a lot of sexual dreams? Are you living in repentance right now? Why have I not dreamt? That's in my book, The Unlocking of Dreams. Right. A lot of people are dealing with um, demonic hindrances that hinder them from receiving dreams. Right. And sometimes it could be so Kelly Duran, are you living pure before God? Do you have a lot of sexual dreams? So you do have a lot of sexual dreams, Kelly. Hmm. So the maggot that you're seeing in your private area is a revelation of defilement, corruption, covenant. Now, if you've been through prayer and fasting, living repentance, with it flying away, it can mean deliverance, liberation.
dreams of two mice who turn into two men who are laughing. I want you to know that shape shifting is real, right? Satan shape shifted into a serpent. He was depicted as a serpent in the book of Genesis. Um, the Bible talks about in the book of Genesis how the sons of God, the angels, came down and became men and slept with the daughters of mankind. Right? And the Bible talks about how false prophets will masquerade as the servants of righteousness, and false prophets will come as wolves in sheep's clothing. So so shape shifting is real. Right? Right? And when you have these dreams, you gotta understand that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you guys something. Some of you are not ready for this. It's a real thing. Shape shifting is a real thing. Some of you may see a cat, and you think it's a cat. And you think it's just a cat. It's not. You gotta understand. We live in a spiritual world. Okay. Don't just sit here and be like. There's some things I want to say, but it's like some of you be like, oh, it's real. Shape shifting is real. It's real, and. A lot of people, a lot of entities, even people who formerly in the occult, they would say how they would shape shift into snakes at night and visit people spiritually. So it's a, it's, it's a real thing, man. Okay? And a lot of the people will begin to have dreams of snakes. And that snake is not just a snake, but it's actually a person attacking you spiritually. So there's sometimes there's always a face behind the snake that you see in your dream. Sometimes there's a face behind the dog because it's not a literal dog. It's not it's not a literal dog. Where do you think they got shape shifting from? It's a, it's a real thing of the occult. It's a real thing. I saw a random cat appear on the port some weeks ago and it was meowing at me constantly and it appeared. I'm telling you, monitoring spirits are real. Anyways, guys, listen. I had a dream I visited a storeroom in heaven, meaning. People could pick up new legs and arms. I believe this, that when God, I believe that when God begins to heal and restore people, I believe that there is a place designated in heaven where it's like a storehouse for like healing. Oh, this miracle, new hearts, new, this, this person's praying for a new uh, heart, right? And I believe that when the angels come, they will come and give you a new heart. They'll heal you, right? And this is why a lot of people where um, they, they had a heart, they're, you're 20 years old and you have a heart of a 70 year old, right? Um, all of a sudden when someone, when they pray for you, go through deliverance, you get healed or your heart, now it's back to like, like you're 12, you have a, you have a really good heart, like your heart's strong out of nowhere. God can give you a new heart 100%. We know that crows always always around darkness, always around death, always around when someone dies, they pick at it, scare crows and stuff like that. So it's definitely not a good sign. So anyways, guys, listen, it was a blessing to be able to be on here with you guys. Were you guys blessed tonight? Were you guys blessed tonight? Let me know in the comments if you are blessed tonight. And I want to do more of these. I want to come on more and answer questions. I know a lot of you are emailing me and I want to answer questions. I, I, I think uh, in a couple of days, I'm going to do a, I want to do a face, uh, a YouTube live question and answers where, where for two hours, I will answer questions. And in those two hours of answering questions, I will be praying for people. So when I answer your question, I'll pray for you right after. And I'll try to do that for two hours. Okay. And Naomi, if I misunderstood you, I apologize. Okay. If 
I misunderstood you. Don't. Uh, I apologize. No, I wasn't trying to offend you at all. Okay. A lot of you received deliverance. Amazing. So listen, guys, um, I'm going to call it quits. Listen, if you want to sow into the ministry, if you're blessed tonight and you want to partner with this ministry and how we're growing, how we're building, how we're <coughs> transforming, how we're trying to pour in, you know, finding, navigating new ways to help. You know, a lot of people are asking for like mentorships and ask me to come here and here and do all this stuff, you know. Pray for me. Sometimes I get exhausted, man. I'm telling you, you know, but pray for me, you know, uh, pray for me and my wife. So, uh, you know, and just uh, that God will, you know, bring the right people in our lives. So I, I believe that one day we will have a team of some sort. People work in the emails with us. I believe that this is just uh, the beginning of what God has in store. Um, but if you were blessed tonight and if you feel led to the soul into this ministry, you can go ahead. The information is on um, the screen with the PayPal and Cash App. Now, I'm going to put, if you want to join the marriage class, um... It's going to be on Zoom. I'm going to put that link in the comments. If you want to just simply be a part of that, you can. There is limited spots, uh, but, you know, we were so blessed to have you in North Carolina at God's Fires Band Conference. Yeah, it was a blessing, you know, North Carolina. North Carolina was powerful. North Carolina was absolutely powerful. Um, yeah. So if you want to register for the for the marriage class, just click on there. Like I said, we'll be dealing with a lot of things. It's going to be a class for singles also. Those who are in marriages, those that always in failed marriages, those that can't get married, those that uh, just feel like they made a mistake, just we're going to focus on godly marriages, uh, demonic marriages, uh, anti-marriage, Jezebel and Ahab, lack, it's gonna, uh, lack, Samson and Delilah, being in relationship with people that are on assignment to drain you and take from you, um, divorce, trauma, soul ties, misleading dreams. Some of you have dreams of your future spouse and stuff like that, but it's a dream from the devil. Uh, lim limited intimacy where the devil begins to attack the intimacy of your marriage. Um, sudden hindrances ever since you got married to that person, you lost your job, you you uh, uh, you know got in a car crash or something crazy happens. Alters and much more. We're gonna deal with that for two days. All right, I don't know if I put that in the comments already, but yeah. So you can uh, I'll pin that right now if you want to be a part of that. Um, it's going to be via Zoom. It's going to be powerful. So I'm going to pin that. Uh, but it's late over here. We've been on for about two and a half hours. You feel me? And I'm, I'm thankful for all of you that joined um, because I'm very intentional when it comes to praying for people. I know sometimes I can't get back to all the emails, but I'm very intentional with making content for people. I literally made this content this morning everything i taught you today you understand me so i'm very intentional with helping god's people bringing people through deliverance preaching you the truth not only exposing but preaching sound doctrine and uh praying for you right i love each and every one of you guys even though i absolutely don't know any of you so waking up with bruises on your legs and arms sharon is a revelation of a covenant it's a, it's a revelation of a covenant. You know, the forces are telling you, we are here. We own you. We have marked you. It's like in certain religions, even in vo the voodoo religion, sometimes they'll do like tribal markings, right? Sometimes they'll do tribal markings on their bodies as a form of a covenant. So the manifestation of your body is a covenant with the Marine Kingdom. 
because those bruises usually come from the sexual dreams and the marine spirits and the spirit of incubus in your life. You understand me? But anyway, got anyways, guys. Um, prophet's gonna log off. I am tired. I encourage you all to sow as we are building, as we are growing in Jesus' name. However, the Lord leads you to sow, and then we're gonna. I'm gonna pray for each and every one of your seeds, um, collectively. You know. But anyways, listen, guys. Um, we're gonna have more of these. We're gonna have more of these, and if you've been in some of my private classes before this is how they don't kind of go like this but it's more so just teaching and not just the whole screaming and whatnot it's more so just teaching teaching then deliverance breaks out on the zoom um so you know um, so walking over dirty dirty water is a revelation that your foundation is faulty right the bible says in the book of psalms chapter 11 verse 3 if the foundations are destroyed what can a righteous man do you just see yourself dirty water, dirty water. Now, if you look at your life, you may see a reflection of things that may be faulty, things that may not be working, things where there may be a hindrance, poverty issues or something that you've been trying to break out of that's not breaking. Okay, Psalms chapter 11, verse 3. If the foundations are destroyed, what can a righteous man do? Okay. Much love to all of you guys. Blessings in the name of Jesus. I love, love, love all of you. Take care. Be blessed. Pray for me. God bless you.